Today we're going to start section 13.3. Um, this is the Pythagorean theorem, distance formula, and equation of a circle. Um, it might feel like that title just is just sort of merging together a bunch of um, a bunch of objects. Uh, these objects are put together on purpose because they are very interrelated. Um, so we'll show you how that is as we go along. Um, the first one, the Pythagorean theorem, is probably one that's pretty familiar to you in terms of an equation. Um, it's finding um, the side lengths or the ratio for a right triangle. So if a right triangle has legs of lengths A and B and a hypotenuse of length C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There are hundreds of proofs for this theorem. Um, I've put on here some of the ones that you might have seen before in terms of a picture point of view. Um, so you can see the triangle itself showing up right here. Um, I'll just do the bottom one here. Here's our little triangle itself. And if you take this triangle and you piece it together like this on this corner and over here, it creates these missing square pieces. And so here's this length right here is A plus B quantity squared, right? And this is A plus B quantity squared. And so we can actually do a subtraction measure to move out the pieces and divide by four to end up getting the formula to work out. Um, this one takes that same triangle pieces and puts them side by side, and you can see they're showing the angle measures. So we've got our angle measure here down at the bottom, angle one, and they've labeled this as angle three and this one's angle two. So angle three here in the middle is the right angle, of course. Um, and the reason this is all adding up is because that we have that 180 degrees in a line and 180 degrees in a triangle. And you can see the, two, the triangle is piecing themselves all the way around. And so we have our C squared for our hypotenuse in the middle here showing up. Um, this is one where you see very typical um, of the way that you see it proved oftentimes with the squares attached to the outsides and the spaces of the A block, right, this one. I can't get up that high on the board. And this one, if you add those blocks spaces together, it will give you the, like the area. You'll get the area of that same block right there. Um, interestingly enough, we actually have a president of our United States who proved the Pythagorean theorem. It was President Garfield. Um, so if you ever want to go and check out his proof for it as well, if you do not remember it off the top of my head, I used to remember it. Um, it's been a while since I've um, explored that one. Um, but he has one of the hundreds of proofs that are available to him. So what we're going to do, of course, is utilize this Pythagorean theorem inside of triangles that we are working with to find missing side lengths. Now, this triangle is a little interesting um, because it is interconnected to be multiple triangles that are all right triangles. Do you see them? How many right triangles do you see? There are three. There's the bigger outer one, and then there's the one on the left and the one on the right. The one on the right's not actually marked, but it's a 90 degree angle as well. So we can utilize the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle in multiple ways, depending on which of the three triangles we're looking at. Now, the reality is that they give us information only about the big outer triangle to start with. Does that make sense to everybody? So the easiest one, based on our Pythagorean theorem to find, is X because it's the outer Pythagorean or outer right triangle. So if we identify that we have our a squared plus b squared equals c squared and we're looking at the big triangle and I'm just putting this as a reference point if you look back at this later as to which pieces we were using. Um, it doesn't matter which is considered a and which is considered b. One of them is four squared three and the other one's four. So yeah, we have to simplify what's on the left, but clearly once we do, we will be able to solve for C because it's the only thing we don't know. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, it's been a while since we've done a lot of algebra together, I know, is that when we square the four, the four square to three, we have to square the four and the square to three, all right? That's an operation of um, our property of exponents. So we have four squared is 16, and then square to three squared is three plus another 16 equals c squared. Uh, if I take all of the left-hand side and add it together, what will I get? Mm -hmm. It's 64. 
So either by taking a square root or by simply recognizing that I'm trying to find this particular square root value, what is C? It's 8. Now there's no units given on our triangle, um, so we don't have to put any units on our answers either. C, which is our x, I should probably identify that because we used x in our problem. That's our x. I'm going to go back and change all my c's to x since we had it given as x. Or you can just label it as c in your picture if you want to do it that way for now. Okay, so that's x. How in the world are we going to find y? Any thoughts on that? Okay, we're going to use something that we did a while back in actually finding the letter Y. We're going to use similar triangles. All right, you took a test where you did some similar triangle stuff for me. These triangles are similar triangles. One of our proofs for showing that a triangle is similar to another triangle is the AA. Do you remember that one? The two angles that match? We know all three of these triangles have a right angle, agreed? If we take a look at, and I'll just use the left hand one, it doesn't really matter which one we use, but if we take a look at this left hand triangle compared with the outer triangle, they both have a 90 degree angle and they also share a side completely and totally. Which side do they share? Four squared of three. Four squared of three. Okay. So they also share an angle completely. They share the angle that's down here at the bottom. That's the second angle for AA, right? Not Alcoholics Anonymous, angle, angle, AA. So second one, I've got a 90 degree angle and I've got this one, you can call it A or whatever you wanna call it, but that's the other angle I have. So I do have angle, angle. I could do the same thing with the triangle on the right, by the way, it doesn't matter. Um, so I need to have these two triangles set up, but it might be hard as you're looking at this to sort of visualize putting them into the right ratio when they're drawn like this. I find that difficult. So if that's something that you find difficult too, we can actually redraw our picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw my picture so that they're in the same um, shape. Like I'm going to reorganize my shapes. So the big outer triangle is the one I'm going to draw first. Okay. Um, I'm going to label the pieces that are going to make what I know. Right. I'm going to label the pieces as 4 square 3, 4, and eight. And I'm gonna mark this angle as a reminder to myself that that's the angle it needs to match up. And this is my 90 degree angle at the top. I want to draw my, I'm going to draw my other triangle so that it looks much like this. I just need to make sure I get my pieces in in the right order. So this angle has to stay the same. And this angle has to be the 90 degree angle. But the 90 degree angle here came from here at the bottom. So essentially what I'm doing, if you can imagine it, I'm taking that orange triangle and I'm flipping it sort of upside down. Can you picture that? So that the 90 degree angle is at the top just like it was in the other diagram. So I don't know this piece at the top that's measuring at the four square root of three, um, but I do know the four uh, square root of three itself, which is down at the bottom on this triangle. I need to shift this up a little bit. So my four square root of three flipped when I did this and it's at the bottom. I don't know either of the two other two sides, but this is the side Y. Even when I flipped my triangle, it stayed on the right hand side. I just flipped up, down, right, not left, right. So that's my side Y. Why does it matter? Well, because similar triangles have these wonderful um, proportional relationships, right? They have things that are in proportion to one another. So I can set up a proportion to find the missing piece. Let me shrink this. So this is my left triangle that I'm working with now, just as a reference again. Um, so I've got a proportion. The pieces that they both have are the pieces that are on bottom. The bottom triangle, or the top triangle, excuse me, has an eight, and the bottom triangle has a four square root of three. So my comparison that I'm choosing to make right now is for this to this. There's several ways we could do it. 
I'm putting my bottom, my big triangle on bottom and my small triangle on top. That's how I chose to set up the proportion. Um, on the other side, the big triangle, or let me see what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find y in the smaller triangle. So I need that unknown to be inside of this equation. And the corresponding side to side y is length four, right? And I find it personally, because I am very visual, to be easier to see by having them set up in the same orientation. That's the word I wanted before. They're in the same orientation now because I can visually get the pieces all there into my equation in the right place. It's really easy to put the equation up in the wrong order if you're not being careful, even if you are being careful sometimes, to be honest. So we have this equation to solve. We can cross multiply. So I have 8y equals 16 square root of 3. 4 times 4 is 16. And if I divide by 8, what will I get? Um, it would just be 2 square root of 3. Yeah. So this 16 and this 8 divide, 16 divided by 8 is 2, so it's just 2 square root of 3. So there's y, and I had x from before using similar triangles. So a note about this, um, it is actually also true that if triangle ABC is a triangle where the sides do have this relationship, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then triangle ABC is a right triangle with right angle opposite side C. Um, this almost feels like, didn't I just write down the same thing again? Um, actually no, you wrote it down in reverse. Right? This is like statements, this is like a statement that's an if and only if statement. If it's a right triangle, then the sides have this relationship. If the sides have this relationship, then it's a right triangle. That doesn't work with everything in mathematics. It doesn't work with everything in our English language. You can't always reverse statements and they're true. This is one you can. Right? So if it's a right triangle, it has this relationship, the Pythagorean theorem. If it has this Pythagorean theorem relationship, it is necessarily a right triangle. And we're going to use that fact down here to make a decision about if these sides actually are the sides that represent a right triangle. So it asks us, do these three sides have a relationship that works? Right? Do they actually have the condition met with a squared plus b squared equals c squared? So it's important to put the things in the right location. You have to put whichever side is biggest as C, okay? It will automatically fail if you don't and not necessarily for the right reason. So our, thir our 22 in the, I'm sorry, 24 in this one has to be C. The other two don't make any difference. You can put them either place you wish. So um, I'll just put them in an order so that they gave us, so that's 10 squared and 16 squared. So what we're really doing is we're asking a question, are these equal? We don't know if they are or not when we first put them in. We're checking to see. So 10 squared is 100. I know that one. What is 16 squared? 256. Obviously, that's 356. What is 24 squared? So what does that tell us? Yeah, it's just not a triangle, right? These are, I mean, it's not a right triangle. These don't match. They're not equal. So this is not a right triangle. It could still be a triangle. It just doesn't have that 90 degree angle that we were sort of looking for. Any questions on that one? So we've kind of looked at this from both sides. Um, the last thing that we're going to do today, um, it's kind of hefty, is talk about special right triangles. Um, you probably saw this in geometry in high school, um, at least briefly, um, that there are two special right triangles. One of them is a 45-45-90 right triangle. Um, these are triangles that are isosceles because they've got two angles that are the same, 45 and 45. In general, an isosceles right triangle with legs of length A 
have a hypotenuse of length a square root 2. So I think my picture's on the next page. Yeah, we'll get to there in a second. Um, what? No, it's not. It's this one right here. This is the one I want. So if you look at these sides, this is side length 1 and this is side length 1. What they're telling you is if you apply the Pythagorean theorem, and we're actually going to do it, 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. 1 squared is 1, so I've got 1 plus 1, making 2. So c is the square root of 2. You see that square root of 2 showing up that it talks about right here, right? So whatever the side length is, this, in this picture it's side length 1, this is 1 square root of 2. If the sides were 4, it would be 4 square root of 2. If the sides were 6, it would be 6 square root of 2, and so on for the relationship to the hypotenuse. And it always works that way because we have the two sides the same. And in fact, um, let me actually write it up here too. You don't necessarily need to write this down, but I can actually show you in general why it has to work too. If the two sides are the same, that means they're both a squared, right? So this is two a squareds. And if you take the square root, then you would have um, the square root of two would have to stay there. a squared square root it is a. And there is the c, the hypotenuse is the square root of two times whatever a would have to be in general. That's one we can do pretty easily with just a little bit of algebra. The second special triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. In this one, the length of the hypotenuse is twice the length of the shorter leg. So whatever leg's opposite the 30 degree angle would be the shorter leg. And the leg opposite the 60 degree angle is square root 3 times the length of the shorter leg. So you can see what the picture does. Um, the picture takes an a, a equilateral triangle. It's 2, 2, 2, right? And what it does is it splits it in half. It says, okay, if I split this in half, I have a side length of one, whoops, I didn't mean that to be white there. Let's use a yellow. I have a side length of one down here, and I have a side length of two right here. So let's just do it for this specific triangle. I have one squared plus the unknown side, we'll call it B, equals two squared. Well, this is one plus B squared equals four. And if I subtract the one, my B squared would equal three. And there I've square rooted. There is that B value showing up with that square root of three. Right? And it all hinged upon that yellow piece at the bottom being length one. So this is actually understood as one square root of three. So what we want to remember as we utilize these is that we have this wonderful relationship. So if I were writing this down like on a note card, how do I write all that down in a way that's concise? Well, this is what I do. I write down 45, 45, 90. And I write down 1, 1, square root of 2. That's the relationship. All right? And then I do the same thing for my 30, 60, 90 one. So I have my 30, my 60, and my 90. 30 is the base length. It's whatever we build off of. This one is 1 square root of 3, okay? That's the same 1 square root of 3. And the 90 is 2. If you want to see it more generally written, you could also do it like this. You could write this as a, a, a square root of 2, or a, a square root of 3, 2a. Right? It's doubling, no matter what the length is. 1 is not the key idea here. It's the idea of what's happening as the relationship. All right, so one more example, and we'll stop for today. We're going to do example number three that relates the idea of this triangle back to area that we looked at in the last section. So we have this triangle, um, or at least a version of this triangle that we just looked at, with side lengths S. 
And what we know is we know that it, since the sides are all the same, that this is an equilateral triangle. So all of these sides are the same, all the angles are the same, so it means these are all 60 degree angles, right? So what it means is that I actually have at the top a 30 degree angle. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Right? It's the same triangle I had before. Now tell me what you remember. What's the area of a triangle formula? Right, one half base times height. Now we know one of those already from the picture. What do we know? Do we know the base or do we know the height? We know the base. What's the base? S. The base is S. It's at the very bottom. The way that the picture is drawn, they're identifying this as my base. The height, the perpendicular part, is the part I don't know, right? I need to find this length right here in order to be able to find the area. I need that height. And as you look at this triangle over here on the right-hand side, you notice that there is that 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let me do this from the perspective of 30, 60, 90 first, and then we can look at it from the perspective of the Pythagorean theorem, which will also work. Okay, so if I'm thinking 30, 60, 90, like I wrote on the other page, the side opposite the 30 would be this one. That side's half as long as it started out as. It originally was S, so now it's one half S. The side opposite the 90, that's S. That's this side right here. The height, the side that I need to know, is what goes in the 60 spot. Well, the relationship over here that we wrote down said that, the rela that if you have the side opposite the 30 is A, or 1, all you got to do is multiply by square root of 3 to find that other one, right? So whatever this is in the 30 column, I just multiply by square root of 3 to get the 60 column. So if I'm thinking about it from that perspective, this means that my height here is 1 half and it's um, the S, right, the whole thing, and then it's square root of 3. It's the same thing I already had times square root of 3. Now, if it doesn't occur to you, hey, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, can you still do the problem? Absolutely. You can do it with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's look at how it looks if you're doing with the Pythagorean theorem. So in my diagram, I should probably highlight a few things since I've got a lot of pink going on. There's H, that's my height. There's this S on the outside, and then while it's not labeled in here, I do have one half S on bottom, right? So I have H, I have S, and I have one half S. Those are the three different sides of this particular right triangle. So with the Pythagorean theorem, H is one of my um, legs. One half S is one of my legs. And S is the hypotenuse. This is the relationship that's set up. It might feel a little overwhelming to you because there's no numbers really involved. It's a lot of variables. But remember what the goal is. The goal is to figure out what is H. I need to know what's my height. So no matter what everything else is, I'm solving for H. So multiply, divide, add, subtract, whatever I have to do, I'm still going to have an S in the problem. That's fine, but I need H alone. So I have my H squared. Remember, from properties of exponents, I need to distribute that square here. So I have 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth s squared equals s squared. And then I subtract. I heard somebody say I subtract. You do. You subtract the 1 fourth s squared. Okay, so if you have... So we have h squared left on the left. s squared minus 1 fourth of s squared is how much? It's not negative. It's 3 fourths s squared. So what I really have here is I have a whole pi. I don't mean pi, then the letter pi. I mean pi like a pie, a whole brownie, a whole whatever. And I'm subtracting off a fourth of it. 
there's three fourths of whatever it is left, that whatever here is s squared. So I have three fourths of s squared left. And then I would take a square root, right? So we take a square root of h squared. Um, I square root all of the pieces. So square root of three doesn't simplify, so it just stays square root of three. S squared square rooted becomes S, and the square root of four is two. Now it looks a little bit different, but this is exactly the same value that we got over here. One half square root of three, or square root of three over two, S, sorry. Yeah, it's all there, just in a different order. So coming back to my area formula, which I was trying to work on and then got stuck because I didn't have the height, you can use either of those you wish. You can write it down as 1 half s squared of 3, or you can write it as square root of 3 uh, s over 2. It doesn't make any difference. These are all my pieces. So I have 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. I have s times s, which is s squared, and I have the square root of 3. You can leave it like this. You could move the square root of 3 in front of the s. Sometimes people like to have the variable last. You can put them on top of the 4. It doesn't make any difference. Any of that will work as my area formula. That is a general formula now for the area of an equilateral triangle. Now you know why you never memorized it, right? It wasn't easy. It's not one half base times height. <laughs> it's far more complicated, but it only hinges upon knowing the side. You don't ever have to find the height again if you don't want to. So if I were to ever ask you now the area of a right triangle, or I'm sorry, the area of an equilateral triangle, and you knew the length of the sides, and you remembered this formula or had it written on a note card, you could utilize that. And you wouldn't have to go through all the steps to find the height. So that's kind of a nice feature. We'll pause there for today.